Hello and welcome to this video. I am Greeny, this is Greenbox, and as we do with most of our action camera videos, this is the setting walkthrough of the Insta360 ONE X2. All right, so the device comes with two physical buttons. We have one button on this side, which I just used to turn on the camera, and it just turned off. And the second physical button is this button here, which is used to capture a video or photos. All right, so let's bring it back onto a live. Everything else we have to control through this circular display we have here. This is not only over viewfinder, which we can use to watch our surroundings. No, this also is a touchscreen, as we just saw by me touching it. So if we want to access any functionality, we need to tap onto this screen once and we get some on-screen displays. However, if we want to change functions of the camera, we need to swipe. And if we type one more time, we see we have arrows pointing from the right, the left, the bottom and the top. So if we would swipe in from the left and we would have an SD card in, we could preview our last shots with it, with the Insta360 ONE X2. If we tip again and we swipe up, we get into the mode selection. We are currently in standard mode, which is taking photos. So let's go again and swipe one more time to standard video mode, which is taking videos. Depending on in what mode we currently are, we get different on display buttons. And we are currently in the video mode. And let me demonstrate how we can change the settings in the video mode. It's the same procedure for all the other mode, but I'm just demonstrating it using video. So if we click onto this video, we get another display of the selection we just had before. We can select between video, photo, and time lapses. So let's go again to the video. And in the video, on the right side, we can change between if we want to record in standard, HDR, time lapse, time shift, or bullet time mode. The bullet time mode, by the way, is the mode where you attach the Insta360 ONE X2 to a string and swing it around. So for the sake of this video, let's go to standard settings, select standard, and once we select it, we get back to our viewfinder. If we then want to change the resolution in which we are recording, because we are currently recording in 5K25, we can click on that and we get to the resolution menu. And in here we can change the frame rate on the right. We can go up to 30 frames a second with 5.7K. And if we go down to 3K, we can get up to 100 frames a second. Other than that, we get this little icon, which allows us to quickly change the lens we are currently previewing. This can also be done by swiping, but it's a little bit faster by just tipping than having to swipe and find the right place every time you want to change the lens. On the other side, we also have a mode selection, which is currently set to 360 degree, which means we are recording the 360 degree video. So we just changed to the 150 mode, which is basically just recording one side of the camera. And if we would want to change the camera, we cannot do that by swiping right now. So we need to press this button this time. So let's go to the other side and you are now previewing the back side. One thing, if you're only recording one side of the camera, we can enable the pro mode, which is here on the resolution, tap there onto pro mode. And pro mode basically allows us to um, adjust the aspect ratio later on, as well as use the flow state stabilization in the Insta360 studio. So let's enable this and we are now in the pro mode. If you want to go back to basic, just press basic again, and we get, again, we'll have basic in camera stabilization. Let's set the camera back to 360 degree real quick. All right, so we are back in the basic functionality of the Insta360. So let's get back to swiping. We already swiped from the bottom and we swiped from the left. So if we swipe from the right, we get to the settings. For example, in here, we can change the exposure. It's currently set to auto. We can go to manual or shutter priority or isolated. And isolated basically means that both lenses do the thing um, independent from each other, which means it could happen that one side of the image is way darker than the other because they do um, adjust independently. Also, we have the EV settings in here and we have the white balance. In here, we can adjust the white balance manually or set it to auto. 
We have the color profile. It's currently set to vivid, but we could go to log or standard. Um, please note that if you go to log to the log format, you of course have to edit it in post on your computer with the Insta Studio or Premiere Pro. So I suggest you either go with standard or vivid, which can be used right from the camera and the app itself. And this is everything we can set in this settings menu in here. So let's go back. By the way, if you want to go back from a menu, either you have to click through it or you just swipe back and you're back. So let's swipe from the top down and we get into the quick actions. I'm not 100% sure if it's really called quick action, but it's basically what it is, quick actions. So for example, the first icon means we can adjust the brightness of our display. So currently it's at 0% and now it's at 100% again. Again, if we want to go back to the last page, we swipe back from the right, sorry, left. And second, we have this icon, which basically enables or disables the blinking light down here. I usually leave it um, disabled because it's pretty annoying. However, if you are far away from your camera and you want to know if it's still recording, the light might be something you want to have. Speaking of recording, in case you're currently recording and you don't want the touch screen to be active, so you don't change any settings accidentally, you can press the locks button. And once you did that, the screen is completely locked and the touch screen is not working unless we unlock the touch screen by swiping up. So let's go back to the quick actions. Next up, we have the icon down here, this rocket ship. This enables the quick capture. And this basically means that if your camera is turned off or asleep and you just press the, the record button down here, the camera will power on, start the recording. And once you press it again, the camera will stop recording and turn off again. And you just saw it, the camera was listening to me and we get to this in the next page. So to scroll the pages, we just swipe again from the right and you're now on page two and there already is voice command because I said start recording and stop recording and the camera is listening to me. And if you want to change that, we just click there and it's now turned off. Speaking of talking to your camera or hearing your camera, you can connect your AirPods to this camera. I don't own AirPods, so I cannot demonstrate this, but this would be the menu in which you connect it to the device. Let's go back. Next up, there is our audio settings, our microphone settings. In here, we can change between two modes. We have the 360 degree um, focus and we have the wind reduction. Uh, I usually go with the wind reduction because I usually break down the, the four microphone streams to a stereo stream anyway for YouTube. So I don't really care about the 360 degree uh, recording. So I just go with the wind reduction. And lastly, there is the settings icon. And the settings icon brings us to the actual settings of the device. In here, we can choose between different um, sections. So let's go first through general. And in general, we have things like the USB mode. And in the USB mode, we can change between desktop mode, in which you would then access the SD card through your camera if it's connected to the computer, webcam mode, in which you can use it as a webcam, and Android, which would be used in case you want to connect the camera via USB cable to your Android phone. So if we want to go back again, we swipe from the left and we're back here. We can change the prompt sound, turn it on, turn it off. Uh, next up, we have the Bluetooth wake up where we can set the Bluetooth wake up. Then we have the auto power off feature and here we can set uh, how long the camera runs until it powers off. I usually leave it at five minutes, so I'm not completely sucking up my battery once I forgot to power it off. Uh, then we have the anti-flicker settings. In here we can choose between the 50 or 60 hertz, depending on if you're living in, the, in Europe or in the US, you will choose one of those. Then language in here, uh, we have the two <laughs> options of choosing, actually three options, uh, English, Chinese and Japanese, I guess, I hope so. And one last setting for the gyro calibration. In case the gyro is off of your camera, you would go in here, set the camera onto the ground and enable 
uh, calibration. In my case, calibration is fine and we're currently not on the ground, so I'm not going to recalibrate my gyro. So let's go back. We also have the Bluetooth remote settings in here in the basic settings of the device. Since I don't have a device to uh, remotely control this Insta360 ONE X2, there is no need for that for me, so I cannot demonstrate that. Then next up, there is the screen auto sleep. Just like the turn off feature, I like to leave it on for about uh, 30 seconds before it goes into sleep mode. Because usually if I'm not using the camera for 30 seconds, I either have to do something more important like setting it up and I don't need the display or I forgot about to turn it off. Then we have the during recording uh, setting in which we basically have the same thing uh, in which we define how long it takes until the display is turning off. And usually I don't need to have the display on when I'm recording, so I leave, so I leave it on auto sleep and that's really it. So next up there is voice control and in the voice control we can set the language. We currently only have English and I guess it's Chinese or Japanese, I would say Chinese, but I don't know for sure. So I'm sorry. Next up, we have the SD card settings. In here, you could format the SD card if one would be in. Currently, there is no card in, so I cannot format nothing. Would be fun though. And lastly, there is the video encode settings. And in here, we can change the video encoding settings for the 360 degree cam as well as the steady cam. And in both cameras, we would be able to change between the H.264 and the H.265 codec. Same goes for Steadicam. And very lastly, we would have the camera information in which we see firmware, exact serial number, and so on. And if you want to go back, obviously, we need to swipe again from the right, and then because we're in the quick action menu, from the bottom up, and we are back on our camera's viewfinder. This is the entire Insta360 ONE X2 settings walkthrough. Let me know in the comment section below if this video helped you to better understand your camera. And if so, please like the video and consider subscribing to Greenbox. I am Greeny, this is Greenbox, and this was the Insta360 ONE X2 settings walkthrough. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video and hopefully you already clicked one of those two videos over there. All right. I'm Greeny. This is Greenbox. Bye.